Act 1, Scene 3. 3,000 ducats. Well. Yes, sir. For three months. For three months? For which, as I told you, Antonio shall be bound. Antonio shall become bound. Well. Can you help me out? Will you agree to the loan? Can I hear your answer? 3,000 ducats for three months, and Antonio to be bound. What's your answer to that offer? Antonio is a good man. Have you heard anyone say otherwise about him? Oh no, no I haven't. I just meant to suggest that is a sufficient guarantor for the loan. But, his wealth isn't certain at the moment. He has one ship bound for Tripoli and another for the Indies. Moreover, the word around the Rialto is that he has a third ship in Mexico, a fourth bound for England, and other ventures he has invested his money in abroad. Ships are just wood, and sailors are just men. There are rats on land and sea, and thieves including pirates. And then there's also the matter of dangerous waters, winds, and rocks. But in spite of all these risks, he is still a sufficient guarantor. You can be sure of that. I will be sure, and I will figure out how I can be completely sure. May I speak with Antonio? Well then, would you like to have dinner with Antonio and me? Oh yes, I'd love to eat pork with you, the animal into which your prophet the Nazarite conjured as the devil. I will buy and sell with you, talk with you, walk with you, and so forth, but I will neither eat, nor drink, nor pray with you. What's the news in the Rialto? Who is the man coming here? This is Mr. Antonio. He looks like someone who wants to take my money, but then asked me for a favor. I hate him because he is a Christian, but I hate him even more because he lends out money without charging interest, which forces me to lower the interest rates that I loan at. If I get the better of him just once, I will satisfy my old grudge against him. He hates us Jews, and he speaks badly of me, my bargains, and my hard-won money in the company of other merchants, talking about interest. May my Jewish tribe be cursed if I forgive him. Hey Shylock, are you listening? I am thinking about how much money I have right now, and as best as I can remember, I can't raise the gross sum of 3,000 ducats right now. But that doesn't matter. Tubal, a wealthy Jew of my tribe, will supply the rest of the money. But wait, how many months do you want the money for? Hello Antonio, we were just talking about you. Shylock. I normally don't lend or borrow money with interest, but in order to help my needy friend, I'll break my custom. Does he know how much money you want yet? Yes, yes, 3,000 ducats. And for three months. I had forgotten the three months you told me. Well then, you'll be the guarantor on behalf of Bassanio, let's see. But listen, I thought you said you don't lend or borrow money with interest. I never do. When Jacob looked after his uncle Laban's sheep, this is the Jacob who was descended from our holy ancestor Abram, and his wise mother made him his father's heir, so that he was the third to possess God's promise. And what about him? Did he charge interest? No, he didn't. He didn't exactly charge interest, as you would say. But listen to what Jacob did do, when he and Laban agreed that all the streaked and spotted sheep would be his, it was the end of autumn and so the sheep were starting to mate. And when the woolly sheep were starting to couple off together to breed, the skillful shepherd Jacob put some dappled sticks in front of the ewes while they were conceiving. When they gave birth, they produced streaked and spotted lambs, and those became Jacob's. Jacob became very prosperous in this way, and he was blessed. Profit is a blessing, if it is not obtained by stealing. But that was something that wasn't in Jacob's power to bring about. It happened through the hand of God. Did you tell this story to imply that it is good to charge interest? Is your gold and silver like a bunch of ewes and rams? Maybe, I make the money multiply as fast as sheep. But listen Antonio. Take note Bassanio, even the devil can quote the Bible for his own purpose. An evil soul quoting holy words is like a villain who pretends to be good, a good looking apple with a rotten core. What a good appearance falsehood can have. 3000 ducats, that's a good round number. Three months out of the twelve that make up the year, then. Let me see the rate. Well Shylock, will we be in your debt? Antonio, many times you have criticized me about my money and habit of charging interest in the Rialto. I have endured it all with patience and a shrug, because we Jews are known for our ability to endure. You say I believe in the wrong religion, call me a cutthroat dog, and spit on my Jewish clothing, 
All because I use my own money to make profit. And now it appears that you need my help. And then, you come to me and you say, Shylock, I need money. You tell me this. You who spat on my beard and kicked me as you would kick a stray dog away from your threshold. You ask for money. What should I say to you? Shouldn't I say, does a dog have money? Is it possible for a dog to lend you 3,000 ducats? Or should I get bent to my knees and with bated breath humbly whisper, Fair sir, you spat on me last Wednesday. You spurned me then. Another time you called me a dog, and for all this courtesy you've shown me, I will gladly lend you this much money? I am likely to call you such names again, spit on you again, and spurn you, too. If you decide to lend this money, don't do it as if we are your friends. After all, when have friends ever charged each other interest? Lend me the money as your enemy, and if I break my part of the agreement you can more happily punish me. Why, look at your temper. I would be friends with you and have your affection. Forget about how you have shamed me. Lend you what you need and take no interest, but you won't listen to me. I'm giving you a kind offer. That would be kind. I'll show you this kindness. Go with me to a notary and sign an agreement. If you do not repay me the agreed amount of money on the agreed upon day and place, you will forfeit to me one pound of your fair flesh, to be cut off from whatever part of your body I choose. Sure, why not? I'll agree to such a deal, and I'll admit there's much kindness in Jews. I won't let you agree to such a deal on my behalf. I'd rather deal with my poverty. Don't worry man. I won't have to give up the pound of flesh. I expect to make nine times the amount of this contract within these next two months, and that's a month before I have to pay him back. Oh Father Abram, what strange people these Christians are. They suspect the worst in others because of their own trickery. Please, tell me this, if he fails to pay me back in time, what would I gain by taking a pound of his flesh? A pound of flesh taken from a man is not worth very much, and isn't as profitable as mutton, beef, or goat flesh. I'm telling you, I'm giving him this kind offer to be friendly. If you'll accept the offer, good. If not, goodbye. And for this kindness I show you, I ask you not to think poorly of me. Yes Shylock, I will enter into this contract. Then meet me right away at the notary's office. Explain to him this happy agreement, and I will go immediately to gather up the ducats from my house, which I've left guarded by a careless clown. Then, soon, I'll meet you. Take care, gentle Jew. This Hebrew must be turning Christian, because he's getting kinder. I don't like fair terms when they're thought up by a villain's mind. Come on. There's nothing bad about this. My ships will come home with the money a month before I have to pay them. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon.